and welcome back to another video and uh, also welcome back to the garage. In that last video, we covered an epic highlight reel of my trip out west. If you guys haven't seen it already, definitely check it out. A little bit of a change up in the vlog, but it was really cool. We got to check out Hoonigan. We got to meet up with Clayton and Faith at Summit Auto Lab. Really appreciate their hospitality, hanging out for a little while and grabbing burgers after the fact. That was awesome. And well, we just got to explore the beautiful state of Utah and Wyoming. And I got to tell you guys what, I'm a little envious of anybody that lives out there in the Tetons or the Rockies or really anywhere that has elevation. I've always loved the mountains and I see myself there eventually. I had actually highlighted the fact that I'm probably going to end up moving out there at one point in the future. I just don't know really when that point is. So if you're at all worried about me leaving Pennsylvania, like anytime soon, it's it's not it's not gonna happen yet, but it, it will eventually. So yeah, there's that. So the plan in today's video, ladies and gentlemen, is to install a new part on the truck and in this video, we will have the winner announcement for the Minimax. We'll be calling that person here very shortly. We just need to get over towards the shop here soon because I'm already kind of burning a lot of daylight with just kind of things around the house that have kind of built up since we've been away. A 10 day vacation will do that to you, but it was well worth it. So this is the box today, ladies and gentlemen, that we will be, well, unboxing, taking out whatever's inside and installing it on the 2020 Denali. It's gonna be awesome. I've wanted to do one of these for the longest time and I can't wait to show you guys what it is. And it is uh, extremely heavy. I need to get it loaded in the Denali and then we gotta get over to the shop. All right, boys, we're loaded up. We are good to go. Oh, man, you gotta be kidding me again. Dang, dude, staying thirsty. It's been super weird lately, guys. Today is the first time that I've gotten to start my Denali in over 10 days since I was on vacation. Speaking of the vacation, a lot of you were wondering how I was posting content while I was posting stories of being out west. Well, I had actually filmed 11 videos in one week before I left because consistency, 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 and I didn't want to break the commitment to three videos a week. I've been pretty committed to that schedule since the beginning of 2019. I've deviated one or two times here and there due to some technical difficulties or like holidays, but I like to hold myself very accountable and I also didn't want to let you guys down. So I'm glad it really worked out. But that being said, my Denali was dead again. And if you can recall, if you've watched some of my previous videos, the truck has died twice previously for no apparent reason. And now this is the third time. I have absolutely no idea why that continues to happen, but apparently there's some sort of a draw somewhere. And I'm going to have to figure out how to root cause that because this truck dying at 7,800 miles being a brand new 2020 all of the time after a few days of sitting stagnant is really not cool at all. Nice, cruising behind an old school enthusiast. Ladies and gentlemen, what are we looking at here? I'm not a classic car expert by any means. I think that that's a Chevy, maybe like a 50s or a 40s, like late 40s, early 50s. Definitely by far one of the best generations for old classics, other than of course like the 69 era. But what are we looking at here, ladies and gentlemen? Drop a comment below, because I really want to know. See you later, brother man, I love the wheels. Got the Denali back in the shop. It's been a minute and dang, this thing is dirty, oh my. God, look at that, boys. That is not something that I am too happy about. That's probably all just like dirt grime mixed with salt paste, not a very pleasing combination. So we're gonna jump into that box here momentarily, but first, as I just mentioned, we are gonna be contacting Andrew Bond from Fairfield, Connecticut right now, as he was drawn as the winner of the Minimax, AKA Dream Diesel giveaway number seven. So not only is he gonna be taking home the 700 horsepower iconic Minimax, but he's also gonna be receiving a check for five grand. All right, guys, so we're gonna try giving him a quick FaceTime call. We'll see if he doesn't answer. I feel like when you FaceTime, you have to hold the camera out here because if you don't, then it's kind of weird because you have like a triple chin from this angle. It's not a, not a very flattering direction, although that's kind of how you want to interact with your phone. He might be busy too, I don't know. I haven't texted him or anything. I'm kind of just calling him out of the blue. He also might have no idea who's calling him right now or what bizarre number is FaceTiming him, so yeah. We'll see. Okay, so he's not available right now, as you guys just saw. Um, we're gonna continue progressing on the mods for today's installation, and hopefully we can touch base with Andrew here at a little bit later point in the video. So here's what we are putting on the Denali today. Does anybody know what it is? Read right there, real quick. Boom. We are putting a hard rolling ton out cover on the 2020 Denali. This thing weighs a ton, guys, no joke. It is extremely heavy. <sighs> So here's what we're working with today, guys. We're gonna be installing a Back Industries Revolver Hard Rolling Tonneau Cover. So, as you can see, its benefits include unrivaled security, 
100% bed access, automatic latching system, and a simple clamp-on installation. So that means it should be pretty easy, which I like. So just a little backstory about why I wanted to go with a ton-out cover on the 2020 before we go ahead and talk about why we decided to go with this route. There's a lot of different routes when it comes to ton-out covers. There's hard folding, there's hard rolling, there's soft folding, there's soft rolling, there's Velcro, there's latching, there's button, there's clamp, there's locking, there's not locking. There's a lot of different options. And we'll talk about why I decided to go with this one here specifically once we get it installed, but I wanna focus on the installation before we do that. They actually have a YouTube tutorial video that's available to walk you through exactly how to efficiently install this correctly the first way, which I've already watched too, which definitely helps a lot. So it seems like they kind of got their stuff together there. Now this is actually gonna be the first ton out cover that I've ever actually installed and purchased for a truck of mine. I've bought trucks in the past that have have ton out covers and every single time I do that I realize why they are so nice and then I always tend to question why do I never buy them for the other trucks that I own no joke I thought about buying a ton out cover for my 2015 LML aka dream diesel giveaway number four for the entire time that I owned it but I never actually ended up executing on that idea why I, I honestly I honestly have no idea but now I feel like I'm finally like a true truck owner, if that makes sense. Owning a truck is easily one of the greatest things and pretty much any man in America needs a truck, whether it's a full size or a half ton or a three quarter ton or whatever the case is. But there are inherent challenges with having all of this cargo space, but having it open to the elements because you can't use it for a lot of stuff all the time because well, whatever's up there is going to come straight onto your cargo. And that's somewhat of a problem. But now I'll be able to put stuff in the bed of my truck and keep it dry and not only keep it dry but also keep it safe because on these new trucks they have locking tailgates and that is a locking tonneau so once this truck is locked and the tonneau cover is completely rolled out I will have the biggest trunk pretty much ever. So I'm not gonna walk through exactly how to do this. I feel like back industry just does that way better than I would ever be able to do it because, well, I have to state the obvious, but it's their product. So you guys can search for that video if you'd like some more in-depth installation, but for now, we're gonna get the process started. Look at that. Let's just take a minute to appreciate the crispness here and the quality and precision. Yes, guys, that is incredible. Talk about fit and finish and well, of course, come on, one hell of an installation. The view up here is probably the best one to get to see the finished product. Everything went on extremely easy. I think that this took me all of about 15 minutes. Now, I did watch the installation video because I didn't want to screw it up and then be inefficient and have to go back and correct some things that I screwed up because I didn't follow the instructions, which I actually didn't technically follow, but in the video form I did. So yeah, I guess I did. And the instructions were honestly awesome. So here's how this works. When this is locked, this is unlockable. You have to unlock it by the inside. So we drop the tailgate here real quick and you guys will see right here, there's a cable here and a cable here. So you pull that cable and you're open or this cable and you're open. So you don't have to pull both of them to unlock the cover. And this is called the slam latch. So you're supposed to kind of hit it a little bit hard. Um, and what I found is that if you pull both of these, you do get both sides to unlock but in order to reattach, you gotta hit one side with one hand and then this side with another, and then you're good to go. So when we close the tailgate then, and we lock the truck, nobody is getting in here. It's got a little bit of a different finish. It is very nice and very, very durable. You can, in fact, put up to 400 pounds on the center of this tonneau cover and it will hold it. My shoes are kind of a little bit dirty right now and I, I would do it, but I, 
kind of paid a little, little bit of money for this thing and I don't, I, I kind of like to keep my things nice. So I'm, I'm not gonna do that, but take my word for it. The installation though is extremely easy, but this is how it works. So take this, grab it, and then you literally just roll it up. And that's why they call it a hard roll cover as you guys just saw a second ago. So you roll it up here. Um, it does come with these foam tubes that have adhesive on the back. Basically the idea is to put them so they don't make contact with the glass, as you can see. So boom, right there, God forbid we have a hard breaking scenario and this rolls forward. It is not going to smash the glass. No metal contact points at all. And then to secure it, it basically just has these two clips. One goes there and then the other one pulls right up and goes here. Now this is sealed on all four corners. Will it be totally weatherproof and waterproof? No, but is it better than driving with an open tailgate? Absolutely. So that rolls up on these rails right here. They are simply held on by one, two, three, and four clamps on either side. And they literally just crimp the rail on this side to the bed rail, which is right here. And then they have these little ridges right here and grooves, so that way they grab in and don't slide off. Same thing on this side, and it is quite literally that simple. And now the nice thing about this is when it's rolled up, I have complete access to my bed as if the tonneau cover didn't exist. As you guys know, I tow my 25 foot gooseneck and getting access to all of that right there is extremely important. Plus, maintaining some visibility is also crucial because I need to see what's behind me. I was considering one of the tri-fold covers that goes like this, but then when you get it to this point, you basically have a third of your bed that's inaccessible. Now, I could have done that and still maintained access to my gooseneck area, but if I wanted to gain access to my full bed, it would have actually had to prop up and prop against this whole area, which would render your visibility completely impaired. Whereas this, yes, visibility might be reduced ever so slightly, but it's still all there so I can see what's going on behind me. Plus, now I only gave up about an eighth of my bed versus a third of my bed with this rolling option, which I really, really like. So obviously, with the tonneau cover rolled down and in its locked place, visibility is going to be completely fine, but the question stands true is how is the visibility from the cab with it rolled up? I gotta turn the mirror off here, there we go. And this is what we're looking at, guys. So what would you say, maybe about a third? I'd say that's about a third. But if you're looking up in the rearview mirror, whoa, 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 stop checking out the pimple situation here. If you're looking up in the rearview mirror right now, I can still see very clearly, but the nice thing about this truck is, I guess I'm a little bit of an exception to the visibility rule. I have a camera, so it's not like it really even affects this truck at all. And what's cool about this thing is too, if we set these straps down, maybe that one will just fall down. You can just unroll this thing from either side. You actually don't even have to jump up in it. You latch and then, you're good and ready to rock and roll. Now it looks like from being rolled up in the box, some of this seal is a little bit wilted, but I would imagine that that'll settle down once this thing stays rolled out for a little while. So I'm really not all that worried. And then up front here, we did put a strip so that way there's no moisture that will get through. You can kind of see it tucked in here. It was the first part of the installation that we did right there. So that way, not much moisture will get through. And again, I wouldn't deem this completely weatherproof. I, I would imagine that some moisture is going to leach its way in. I like stickers that don't leave residue behind. I'd, I'd imagine that some moisture is going to creep in, but buying the ton out cover is kind of like, what do you want it to be best at? Do you want it to be really good at one thing? like weatherproofing or security, or do you want it to be the best of all worlds? And I feel like that's what I accomplished right here. So I'm pretty amped about this, being it's my first ever ton out cover that I installed that's this style, but it's not the first revolver I ever had. If you guys remember Ron Burgundooly, AKA Dream Diesel Giveaway number two, it actually had this ton out cover on it. That's when it came onto my radar, and then at SEMA, I was able to hang out with Truck Hero for a while and really see some of their products, and it was at that point that I knew that I needed to have it. Now, what'll be nice is I can throw things in here and not worry about them. I'm always moving truck parts and wheels and I mean, even just stuff for the family that sometimes I don't like to take out of the back of the truck. At night, I get home late, we have all been there, and then it's like, oh man, now I need to unload everything because I don't ultimately want to leave my valuable possessions in the bed of my truck exposed for the world to see. But now, that's not a problem whatsoever. All right, guys, so now we're going to give Andrew a buzz back. He actually just texted me and said he's free now. He was in the middle of something before. I think we can all relate. Here we go. <laughs> What's going on? Aye, aye, dude. What's going on? How are you? Good. I just woke up from a nap, clearly. 
Oh, is that, you were busy taking a nap. My man, that's a good way to spend a Sunday. I can't even argue that at all. Uh, I don't have all that much time and I don't want to take too much of your time, but I did want to just wish you congrats, man. Like, you. you were drawn as the winner from our third party sweepstakes agency and we're going to get you down this week to take possession of the Minimax and a $5,000 check. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> How does the registration work, being as I'm from out of state? I'm a veteran, so I have certain exemptions on registration. Nice. Well, dude, thank you for your service, first of all. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you. You're, I appreciate it. you're actually our first veteran to have ever won a truck, man. So that's that's a really special moment, man. I really appreciate, appreciate it. And to it. everybody that's watching this video now, thank you all so much for your service. Seriously, it means the world. We're going to get you, it's 75 bucks for basically a temporary registration or plate. Uh, that lasts 60 days out of Pennsylvania, and then that gives you time to get everything squared away back in your home state of Connecticut. Gotcha. Okay. Call your insurance agency and just say, hey, I'm going to pick a truck up. I literally just want it. Um, sure is there any way? Oh, Siri, Siri, you are so nosy. Jeez, listen to yeah, her, Siri. dude. She's always up Siri in my business. Has a tendency to just start talking when she's not needed. What? <sighs> Come on. Jesus. It's happening, it? It's happening, man. It's extremely real. Wow. Of course, want to put like a big disclaimer out and just say, you're getting a really fast truck. Straight up, like, make you feel like you're behind the wheel of a rocket ship. How long have you been following the channel, just out of curiosity? I don't honestly know. I just I kind of watch your videos every night. Well, I appreciate that, dude. It means the world. And the transmission on the truck was completely refreshed. Got a brand new converter in it, billet input and output shafts, billet intermediate shaft, all new clutches. So you're pretty good to go. It's butter. Hmm. Did you answer the first call or did you have to call him back? I don't usually answer numbers I don't know, but I, I don't know whatever reason I answered it. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, we'll play in a minute. Hey, I'll let you go. I'll, I'll let you get to your duty there. Um, I'm about to watch the Denali anyway and stuff like that. But, dude, honestly, I cannot wait to get you down here. We're going to have an awesome time. We're going to get this I'm thing completely way. cleaned up for you, and I'll have a check with your name on it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're, that's loud in the back. I'm real sorry. No worries, man. No worries. I love kids. It's great, dude. It's really cool. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. But, yeah, thank you, man. This is... I don't even know how to describe. I hope it makes time go quickly for you rather than slowly, because usually it's the latter. Cheers, Andrew. It's nice to meet you, man. We'll see you soon. Nice to meet you. Have a good one. See you soon. All right, guys. So that was a call with Andrew. He is, in fact, the winner of Dream Diesel giveaway number seven. And he's our first veteran. So all of our veterans out in the audience, man, I love you guys. Seriously, you decided and you vowed to protect this country, to allow freedom for everybody else in it. And man, I couldn't be any more appreciative. Andrew, thank you so much for your service, dude. Thank you for your support. It means the world. I can't wait to get you out here this coming week to give you the keys and a check to the Minimax. All right, so I have had salt deposit sitting on this truck for way too long. I didn't have a chance to wash it before I left on my vacation, meaning that salt's been sitting on it for uh, like over two and a half weeks. It's terrible. And that being said, it desperately needs a wash. I'm obviously trying to get the salt off the body, but one of the big things that really makes me restless is all the salt up underneath the truck. But I have a correction for that, and that's what I wanted to show you guys. And that is this thing right here. I ended up going out and picking one of these up because I felt like it was an absolute must have. This is one of those like, We now have a wand that we can pressure wash the undercarriage with rather than trying to get up there with the standard angle nozzle. It just doesn't work. Whereas this thing, we're gonna be able to literally get up and underneath to clean up all of the tough to reach areas to prohibit any rust to the best of our ability. Good with the drone. I love that thing. Didn't think I'd use it as much as I do, but I really like it. And now the moment of truth, guys, I did spray a lot of high pressure water directly at all of the different sealed areas of this cover as a small little test to see how it withstood the water. Wow, look at all that water dripping off the back. And the moment of truth. So here's the box that the tonneau cover came in and it looks like it's pretty dry. These are some drips that are just coming off the edge right here. And let's see how the front looks. Not bad, that drip came from right there. Looks like we're dry, guys. This is great. And we'll do a quick roll here. Now, I don't know if water is gonna drip off, so this might actually hinder our test results a little bit. But, let's see here. All right, so looking around, looks like we had a little bit of water drip through right here on the right side wheel well. 
Same thing goes on the left side here. Now that actually might have come through in part one of these caps. Looks like kind of the other thing did too. And that could have been from the pressure washer pushing water up and through. Up front here, not that bad. A little bit of moisture seeping through this opening there, not even the cover. Right there, it looks like we have a little bit of moisture creeping down from the one little corner. So again, not totally watertight. We do have a little bit of water here. It seems like it's from this seal in the bed, it's actually all dry up here, so it's coming from right there. And then in the back, we've got water that runs down this opening. This is pretty pretty exposed. That's how that locking mechanism works. That's pretty cool. And then kind of the same thing on this side. But overall, our cargo would have been completely dry. Now, I know that that's not the perfect real-world scenario or test application, but it is a pretty good indication of the fact that, yeah, your stuff's gonna be good to go, and now we have more usable cargo space rather than just inside the cab. I'm stoked about this, guys. This is really cool. Now, the even better part is that cardboard, I don't have to worry about flying out either. Close this up, and it's safe for highway travel. Seriously, guys, for anybody that's out there that's a pickup truck owner, or maybe even if you're considering buying a pickup truck, just remember to factor in an extra roughly $800 to like $1,200 for something like that. I believe I paid like $1,200 shipped for that back industries cover. It is a little bit on the higher price point. There are other alternatives, but seriously, if you're considering buying a truck for daily driver use, or if you're daily driving a truck right now without a ton out cover, take it from me from owning over 10 trucks. It is so worth it. No brainer decision. Factor it into your buying situation. Yup, doggy. A big old bag of food is just for you, little man. Ha oh, yeah, that stuff looks good, don't it, dude? All right, guys, so we are back at the garage now, and this is where we're gonna wrap up the video. I just wanna let you guys know that Dream Diesel Giveaway number eight is soon to launch. It's gonna be coming up here in just about a week's time. Plus, we might have another truck joining the channel here very soon. Uh, it might have already been a little bit in the works, and I might already potentially have the keys for the truck, and yes, I might have held that secret from you guys this entire video which was extremely hard to do, but do you blame me? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I gotta build up the suspense just a little bit. But that's where I'm gonna end this video. Look forward to meeting Andrew a little bit later in the week as he will be coming down to take possession of the Minimax. Plus, look forward to some other changes coming to the 2020 very soon. My Like League, I love you guys, do you the best. Thank you for almost 200,000 subscribers. Welcome to 2020, and I'll see y'all in the next upload. Hey, run, run, get somewhere, there's no